Let me help you remember. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 7, right? I don't really want it there, it's not helping me. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides, that leaves me with this. So I'm suggesting that's probably what your first line should look like. Okay, it doesn't have to be, we didn't, but um, it's a helpful way to go about it. Now the next thing I want is to complete the square, as the name suggests. So there's a number I can add to this left hand side, which when I factorise it will be the square. So I get that number by halving and squaring. You half and then you square. Halving that gives you negative 2, squaring it gives you 4. So I get plus 4, plus 4 because of course it's an equation, we should stay balanced. Okay. I've got 11 on the right hand side, that's no big deal. But on the left hand side, what have I created? I've created a square, it's x minus 2, all squared. Okay. So from there, now you're probably familiar with what to do, I'm going to have plus or minus the square root of 11 on the right hand side, and then the last thing left is to add 2 to both sides. So this should be the answer you want to on. Okay. So, we've got two, two solutions, thumbs up, if I tested them out, I should be able to find that the left hand side will be 0. It will be a true statement. Now what we're going to look at right now is how do we use that because this skill, what we do is we apply it to a particular situation. In maths you'll hear this word sometimes, um, applications, like not like I submitted an application for a job or you know I open the application on my phone, that's what that's short for. I'm applying this skill to a particular kind of problem. So we were looking at these, or we've been looking at these for quite some time. The problem we were looking at yesterday was, if you remember, we wanted to find the vertex of this shape, and then we could draw it. Do you remember that? Is that ringing a bell? What was the way we did that? We found a particular line that helped us get the vertex. What was the line? Remember? It starts with an A. It was the axis, axis of symmetry. Once you find that, which by the way, what is the axis of symmetry? You would put into the formula x equals yeah, minus b on 2a. So you evaluate that, or maybe you look at where the two x intercepts are and go halfway. Either of those are fine. Once you find that, you can get the vertex. Okay, you put that x value into this equation, you get a y value, and you're done. But completing the square gives us another way to find out where the vertex is without going through this awkward way, okay? So how we use complete the square, this method, to find the vertex of this? Well, what I want to do is think about the quadratic part of it that can become a square. I'm just going to leave this plus 5 over here. Okay. Now, if I had this, x squared plus 8x, on the left hand side, you would think, I know what to do to get the next number. I would take 8 and I would half it square. You half gives you four, the square gives you sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Now, this is a bit weird and slightly different. So it's very much like complete the square. You're still doing the same thing, but I don't have it balanced out on left and right. I don't have like a zero on the right hand side. So in order to make sure I haven't actually changed this equation, at the same time as adding sixteen, I'm going to take away sixteen. That looks strange. Adding something. <laughs> adding something and taking it away. But what I'm trying to do is make that square, firstly, that's why this is here. But I'm trying to make sure the thing doesn't change. I want this real original parabola. Okay? So that's why plus 16 minus 16, it's still the same thing. Watch. So, what I've now created, uh, this little set of terms here, this is a square, right? Just like over here, what is a square? It's x plus 4, very good. x plus 4. Uh, we can collect some like terms over here. This is going to be minus, minus 11. So I'm going to do one more thing to this, and then we're going to use this to find the vertex. So this form here, and you can put a box around it, this form here is another form of writing the parabola. See, this form is general form. General form. <coughs> We've seen that before. That's what you usually get. But this is called vertex form, because if you know how to read it, it literally just tells you what the vertex is. Okay. If you recall,
recall what y equals x squared looks like. We're very familiar with this shape. It just looks like that. Okay? So this is, bless you, a regular parabola. Okay? It's centered, or it's, it's vertex rather, is that the origin? No big deal. Oops. I want you to tell me what that would look like in comparison. I need you to think back on this one. Um, oh. What would it look like? It's moved somewhere. It's just like that, but it's moved somewhere. Okay, where's it gone? Does it move two units down? Okay, so we know it's moved two units. Perfect. The clue I'm going to give you is uh, x and y axis. Which one is up, down, which one's left, right? Uh, the y axis is up and down. The x axis is left and right. So see how the minus two is attached to the x? So it's changing left and right. Okay. Now the question is, is it left? Or is it right? It's to the right. Here's how you can know. Oh, that's right. Instead of being at the origin, the vertex is down over here at 2, 0. Okay? And you can work that out just by punching in a number. Like say, x equals 2. When x equals 2, what happens to this thing? You get 2 minus 2, which is 0. You square it, so y equals 0. So that's how I know that's a point. So, Think about this, x minus 2 has moved you to the right, okay? Have a look at this, x plus 4. This is moved to the left, how far has it gone? 4, four, four units, can you write that down? 4 units to the left. Okay. It's a bit strange because I uh, see that minus, we usually think of that as a negative. But you've gone to the right. This plus, that's a, that's a positive, but it actually moves you to the left. Okay. So we've got four units to the left. That was on the x's. Now have a look over here. There's something on the y's as well, right? No prices for guessing how far you've moved. You've gone how far? 11 units. That's how far you've gone. But which way have you gone? Now y's are about up and down, right? Y's are about up and down. So I know it's either up or down. But do you see how there's this weird backwards thing? Look, minus 2, you would think of as a number to the left, right? But it's moved you to the right. Plus 4, you would think of as a number to the right, but it's moved you to the left. So everything is reversed, which is a little strange. So it's 11 units, not up. It's 11 units down. Okay. So from that information, I now know what the vertex is. The vertex isn't at zero, 0, anymore. The vertex, well, if you start from 0, 0, and you go 4 units to the left, you're going to be at negative 4. That'll be your x coordinate. And what will your y coordinate be? You've got 11 units that way. Negative 11. That's the vertex. Okay? So, let me just rewind a second. You start with a parabola. Sorry, I'm a quadratic equation. You do this completing the square business, and if you get into this nice form here, you can read off the vertex, it's these opposite numbers, negative 4, negative 11. Okay? 